Hey guys, Artosis here, bringing you some more Cast Muse Star League Season 4. This is from the third and fourth place match. It's a best of seven, and this is game number three. All right, right now we have Rush leading two to zero over Action. Uh, some very different games actually coming out of Action. Action choosing uh, three hatchery openers both times. The second time that we just finished up, though, with Mass Burrowed Ling as kind of a trap to catch Rush when he moved out. Now, unfortunately, Rush didn't move close enough to the Birdlings to make it work, uh, but Action still had to try it because that was kind of all of his eggs were in that basket after he produced them and researched the Burrow upgrade. So didn't work out. Now, even though Rush is up to, oh, I'm not like too scared that this is gonna be a one-sided blowout. Uh, Action, you know, it, he took a bit of a risk on that map. The first map Eclipse is a little bit harder for Zerg in my opinion, so. I think we can actually have a, a pretty good series here. Now this map is uh, Optimizer, right? And Optimizer, as you can see, like we've talked about this a lot, at the natural base, you do have these 250 mineral patches that you can mine out or just pop drones, SCVs, probes over to go down here and expand to this base. Now it's not a full gas, as you can see, 3000, uh, as uh, like every other expansion of the map is because there's so many gases that you can take. Uh, but this allows Zerg to do some very different types of strategies. And let me explain why, right? Uh, because you have just one choke point that will defend three bases, unless, of course, if Rush is down to the bottom right, right? That changes the, the map quite a bit. But uh, in a situation like this, that one choke point will defend everything. So you can actually defend everything Terran can do, basically, with lots of sunken colonies. Uh, now... That makes it so that this map is a very popular one for what we call Crazy Zerg. Okay, and Crazy Zerg is basically when you go directly into Ultra Ling. Uh, normally what you're going to do is open up with Mutalisks, and this is a two hatchery gas timing, so definitely we're going to see Mutalisks here. Uh, and then he'll probably... Well, if you go Crazy Zerg, what you'll do is you'll hop a drone over here pretty quickly for that third before your Mutas are even ready. Uh, and then you'll have a ton of gas and come and you'll go into Ultra Ling. You'll skip Defiler, you'll skip Lurker. So it can be a very strong strategy. There is counterplay from Terran if they figure out what you're doing. Uh, but it's definitely a strategy that we see a lot on Optimizer. So yeah, I'm kind of interested to see if Action wants to play like that. Now he's mining his gas. Rush gets up, sees... Okay, we're playing against a two hatchery uh, gas timing as opposed to a three like the last couple of games. Rush here has gone ahead and done a wall-in, has a single marine out front. And that's just to make the drone turn around. And yeah, uh, he's expanding. So it looks like a bio opener here for Rush. Now getting that scouting done, seeing the lair. He knows that it's not a Zergling Rush or anything like that, which he wouldn't do anyways because of the wall-in. Couple Marines are out. Again, just trying to deny any information that can occur. Like, for instance, Action right now doesn't even know if this is a gas opener from Rush. So he'll probably have to put down a single sunken colony early on. Just to make sure he doesn't die to vultures. Now, Engineering Bay coming up. That's a very quick Engineering Bay. And this has become pretty trendy against two hatchery openers as well. It's It's been pretty popular. Uh, you know, it's it's starting to go away a little bit right now. But it's still a powerful opener. And I think it's uh, pretty smart for the map, too, because you get your upgrades a little bit quicker with it. And that's just very strong against uh, the the type of strategy that I talked about, the quick Ultralisk rush. Like, attack upgrades are incredibly important for Terran. Now, there's that third hatchery. He just popped a drone over to take it. And the Spire. So everything kind of going according to plan, as, as we thought it might end up going. Rush sending up his SCVs. And got some good saturation all over the place. We'll see, uh, though, wh where this is going to end up going on both sides. For action, what's going to give away if he's going for that Crazy Zerg style is he'll throw down an Evolution Chamber relatively soon because you have to get your Carapace upgrades started. Uh, now, that doesn't have to be before Mutas. There's like a big range of how quickly you might end up doing that. It's like uh, maybe a bad click there on the drones going behind to the Spire. On Rush's side, saturating these mineral patches. It's really important to try to mine those out as quickly as possible so that you can actually walk down and try to take the bases. 
have the second barracks on the way. Stim is already started. Look at that, plus one, about a fourth of the way done. And Rush just kind of out on the map patrolling with his lings or uh, his Marines a little bit. That pushes back things like Overlords that might want to go into positions like right here. That's what he's looking for right now. He's just kind of fanning out. Of course, catching any Zerglings is nice as well. But you see a kind of similar thing from action. He's just running the lings around trying to figure out, okay, what are you doing? When are you doing it? Now, there is that single sunken that we were talking about. Muta's on the way. And there's the evolution chamber. Okay. Uh, so, most likely, this is going to be what I was talking about. He's also getting plus one mutalisk attack. So, that tells us he's really going to try to put a lot of damage out with the mutas, which makes some sense. Uh, this base is a little bit hard to defend against mutas. You need a lot of turrets there. And, of course, you kind of have a wide entry point as well as these depots. So, definitely possible for him to get some good harassment damage done. All right, the first mutas are coming out. Going to go ahead and hit that SCV a little bit. Rush is going to be throwing up turrets pretty frantically, seeing those mutas out. Should be throwing up some in the main base as well. Going up immediately into five barracks. Okay, so what we're seeing from Rush... Oh, this is, this is going to be an interesting game. He's going up to five barracks against a two-hatchery opener from Zerg. So he's not really going to have that much money to tech up his plus two attack upgrade will probably be a little bit slow so he's going to be really strong in the mid game but his late game may suffer because of that we'll see when he puts down that factory uh but he's floating this down now getting that real production going notice the mutas in the middle here they're just trying to pick off anything that they can of course he'll throw down more sunkens if he feels like he needs them the queen's nest uh being thrown down here in front of the sunkens uh, blocks movement so he can't target onto the sunkens as easily and honestly as soon as you start uh, the hive you don't need the queen's nest anymore unless you're doing one very specific ensnare ultralisk strategy which probably we won't see here alright so a lot of marines being sent out we should see a bunch of sunken start right now I think he needs at least four yeah the scan goes down he sees them all starting up and I think the Mutalisks can buy enough time. These Sunkins should be able to finish up. He is going for that Magic 4 number. Hive on the way. Second Evolution Chamber. It is absolutely a rush up to Ultras. So the Factory we see is going to be finishing up. He needs to go directly uh, upwards towards his uh, Starport and his Science Facility so he can continue to upgrade. We'll see probably a couple Starports go down. No damage has happened to Rush as of yet for his economy. So that's really nice. The Muta's coming down. This is a whole group. They can kill these three turrets so quickly. And in fact, that's what he's going to do. He's jumping on top of the turrets. He has enough Sunkins to stop a counterattack. So honestly, Rush, uh, he's left himself a little bit open here. And Action found his way in. He gets in. The lazy Starports. That's huge. Goes after the SCDs in the main minerals as well. And honestly, this is a great move from Action. He ends up losing uh, two Mutalisks during this and taking some damage as well. But look at all this stopped mining we have. Look at this being slowed down. The main thing we're looking for is when does plus two attack get started compared to plus two carapace? And he's going to be stalled out. He's not going to have the science facility ready in time. Uh, even though like it looked like he was going to be able to get it pretty similar. But I think action's going to get ahead on upgrades just slightly. All right. Starport finishing. Needs to throw down that science facility immediately. Rush right now, walking around the map with his bio. He's looking to catch anything he can. But honestly, the Mutas are doing their job. They're just putting on some harassment, slowing him down. You can see the Sunkins continue to be added on. Uh, and he's just got to make sure he can't be broken here before his Ultras are out. It takes a little bit. You need the Chitinous Plating upgrade. You need the plus two Carapace upgrade. Those are both very important. Now, the Science Facility is going to be finishing. I don't see a second eBay. Oh, I'm getting worried for Rush right now. Oh, he's going double dropship. Okay, so we actually get a sneak peek. It, I think he feels behind. Like, he can't play the normal countering upgrade style, right? Like, normally you just rush into your own plus two attack and match upgrades with those ultras. Here, he's going for dropships. And what he'll probably do is go for four, I think. And then just try to kill action right before action has ultras. It's a very risky play from Rush. If it doesn't do massive damage, then action should be able to win this game. All right, two dropships coming out. We'll see if he starts science facilities or just goes with these two. Oh, he's just going with the two. So he's going to try to bust this base. And if he can get that, it's going to become a much longer game. 
Uh, I do want to mention that we have a hilarious hatchery going up from action here just to get additional gases. <laughs> See, these are actually two bases that you would normally take uh, in, well, a normal way. But Zerg doesn't really need minerals in this matchup as much. So he drops off at this third base. A Scourge actually gets that first vessel, or the first uh, dropship, and then the other ones get the next one. Only six Marines getting out. How much damage will he end up getting? The Mute is going to fly back, so he's actually not going to lose the hatchery. He loses a few drones. Honestly, this didn't go that well for Rush. Action has to be feeling good right now. Let's see. He has his plus two. It has started, but he waited until the uh, plus one armor was done. And that means that these Ultralisks, as this plus two carapace finishes and as Kiteness plating finishes, he is going to be in a position where his Ultralisks just do not die to Rush. So Rush is in trouble here. I do not like his position. I do not envy him in this game. All right, he's dropping off a lot of bio onto the low ground. He still has maybe a tiny window where he can fight Ultras. But... Oh, man, their upgrades are going to be finishing. There's plenty of Ultras down here already. The Mute is coming in for a flank as well. Here we go. The Ultras, no, they decide to turn around. Trying to wait for that four Carapace. That's where they really, really are tanky. Especially against plus one Marines. Back at home, Rush is getting irradiated and everything. But look at this. The Mute is microing from one side. The Ultras attacking from the other. And the Ultras, yeah, I mean, he is going to be able to clean this up. And once again, Rush's drop doesn't honestly do anything. He's reduced the Mutalist count, but those, they've already been as useful as they need to be. Now he's losing his whole army here once again. What did he kill? One Ultra during all of that? Those are, that's the valuable unit right now for, for action. Now Action's Carapace is done. His Ultralisk speed is on the way. We need to see him start the plus three Carapace and... That's like, that's going to be amazing for him. Rush is going up to a lot of barracks, which he absolutely needs. Because right now, you honestly need like a group of medics. And you need like, against what action is about to field, you need like five groups of marines to fight that. So this is, it's a tough game right now for Rush. I am not feeling confident about him winning this one. Action, even getting more gas, he's going to be able to produce so many ultralisks. Rush staying back a little bit. He doesn't have a big enough army, and he still needs this plus two to finish. So kind of waiting on that. He's, he's grabbing another engineering base so that he can get his uh, plus two armor started along with the plus three attack. So that's a good move. Dropship still being utilized. Ooh, this is a nice find for him. Oh, the Scourge are going to get it. Only two Marines coming out. So he'll be able to push the drones back. But again... Not the damage that he's looking for. He's sacrificing a lot of army trying to get damage done. And look at, just look at the numbers up here, okay? 44 SCVs against 49 drones. That's always scary to be behind in workers. And he's down 30 supply. 30 supply. If Zerg is even with Terran in supply, they have a better army. But if they're up, it gets ridiculous. Uh, Zerg supply is just so, so efficient. So the Ultralisk set, oh my god. It is a lot. This is a lot of ultras right now. <laughs> he's got 11 ultras, 13 ultras, and he's hatching three more right now. So that is a scary army indeed. Now we do have the plus two attack. So the Marines can technically fight. They will do damage to these ultras. But we don't really have enough, honestly. I think we need another full two more groups of Marines here to have a real chance to fight against the incoming Ultras. Action just kind of running around. You can see the science facility kind of scouting. This is a very common tactic to fly these out in the late game to kind of spot flanks, to spot counterattacks and things like that. And look, he's chasing with uh, his vessels. But Scourge coming down, going to punish. They get one of them. So he'll get some irradiates off. That's a really good move. This is the type of thing you need to do. But as action sends down the Scourge, it becomes less and less worth it. So he loses three vessels, getting off five Irradiates. Irradiate doesn't even kill the Ultra, so not necessarily the best move. But you know what? He chased these all the way down here. And now he gets a Hatchery kill. So the overall balance of this, you know what? Rush came out on top there, even though he loses some vessels. Well, now he loses two more on the way back. It's getting, it's getting much more iffy at this moment. Uh, losing each and every vessel is incredibly painful. 
Catches an ultra up there. Kind of nice. Finds the rally point with the factory. That is really awesome. Especially when you see the overlords and drones there. You know that's where the hatcheries are set. Now, Action is trying to sneak a base in the top left. Uh, that could be a free kill if he figures out it's there. But the ultras look like they want to counterattack. Uh, the counterattacks don't necessarily go that well because this is a very squished area. So it's more easy to hold in that in that spot. What you really want to do with the ultras is fight the marines on open ground. Because then they get their surface area. There is a ton of ultras though walking forward here. Yeah, and he sees the medics are... We have some medics in the front which will block well. The depot will block well. But he's going to go for it anyways. This is a ridiculous amount of ultras running in here. Oh my god. But you can see... They are barely attacking. This is cost inefficient as you could ever get with these ultras. They turn around as these bi this bioforce comes back. And he just has so many that it might end up working. But the ultralist is making a wall here. Having a hard time. Uh, the ultras coming around the other side. They do have that additional carapace now at their max of five carapace. So they'll kill that off. And GG is called action. Takes his first map win.